Yo, Brianne Thompson here with Access Flight School, and in today's video, I would like to discuss cloud clearance. USPA's basic safety requirements state, no skydive may be made in violation of the Federal Aviation Administration regulation. Not all countries have cloud clearance regulations, but jumpers in the US must abide by those found in FAA regs 105.17, which places joint responsibility for adherence on the jumper and the pilot. Though falling through clouds poses no health risks in and of itself, clouds can hide potential dangers that do, such as aircraft and other jumpers to collide with. Not to mention that jumping through the rain and hail that often come with clouds can be really unpleasant. Under canopy, air conditions near clouds are often turbulent, which poses particular danger if you're flying in a canopy formation. Most jumpers have a difficult time remembering the cloud clearance regulations. That is why, in this video, I will cover the reasons for the different altitude requirements and provide you with the memory trick to easily remember the numbers. I will also briefly cover what legal actions could occur as a result of busting the cloud. Make sure to stick around to the end of this video where I will share a pro tip that will make you a better spotter. That way, you and your friends can hopefully avoid any possible negative repercussions or injury as a result from punching a cloud. Why do the rules change at 10,000 feet MSL? The distance and visibility requirements change at 10,000 feet has to do with aviation speed limits. Below 10,000 feet, the FAA limits aircraft to a top speed of 250 knots, and they may not exceed this speed. Above 10,000 feet, pilots may travel at any speed up to Mach 1, unless of course air traffic control has issued a speed restriction. Skydivers operate under visual flight rules, which are based on the see and avoid principle. The idea is that aircraft flying slowly at lower altitudes are easier to spot, and therefore others do not need as much distance or time to react. Because aircraft may fly at greater speeds above 10,000 feet, VFR pilots need more time and therefore a greater distance from clouds to recognize and avoid traffic that may be flying through those clouds. It's also more likely that there will be aircraft in those clouds since those flying at that altitude will likely be traveling under instrument flight rules, which allow it. Some people find it helpful to use a mnemonic device in order to remember the cloud clearance rules. If you are above 10,000 feet, we are required to have five miles visibility, stay 1,000 feet above, 1,000 feet below, and one mile horizontal distance away from the nearest cloud. Remember these numbers by thinking of the parachute fabric F111. The F stands for five miles. Under 10,000 feet, we are required to have three miles visibility, 1,000 feet above, 500 feet below, and 2,000 feet horizontal. Here, you can think of three low-flying Cessna 152s. What if I do bust a cloud? If you notice clouds on the way to altitude, make note of the altitude of the cloud base, just in case you find yourself in them. If you do find yourself in a cloud of freefall and you think the base is above your original intended deployment altitude, plan to freefall below the base and deploy at that altitude. However, if you have not cleared the base and the clouds when you arrive at your intended deployment altitude, you should go ahead and deploy in the cloud. In other words, don't go low waiting to clear the base of the cloud. In the worst case scenario, the cloud base may reach all the way to the ground, i.e. there's a fog layer. Pull at your intended altitude. If you are tracking or wingsuiting, especially in a group, maintain a straight course. Control your opening as much as possible as you open so your canopy stays on heading. Once you are under canopy and have performed a controllability check, fly using a gentle turn to the right to avoid flying into another jumper's airspace. Use a brake or flat turn and avoid spiraling. It is your responsibility as a jumper to make sure that you have a clear spot. Never hesitate to ask the pilot for a go around, but if no opening presents itself, all jumpers on the load should exit below the cloud base. What are the possible disciplinary actions for cloud clearance violations? Enforcement can come from different agencies depending upon the people involved. The FAA can fine, suspend, or worst case, revoke the license of the jump pilot. For the jumpers involved, the FAA can pursue civil penalties. Fines and civil penalties in these incidents can range from $1,000 to $25,000. USPA can suspend or revoke memberships, licenses, or ratings for anyone involved. Last but not least, the drop zone can have their USPA group membership suspend or revoked. Now for the pro tip. How do you determine horizontal distances while you are spotting? 
If your DZ has a paved runway with markings, you can get a sense of scale by referencing the distance from the numbers to the thousand foot markers. You can practice this by holding a piece of paper over an aerial map of your home DZ. The paper simulates a cloud and by moving it to various locations on the chart, you can develop a mental image between go and no go scenarios. Well, you guys, thank you for stopping by. My name's Brianne Thompson. I'm one of the coaches at Axis Flight School and we are located at Skydive, Arizona and uh, we hope to see you out there. It is a place with far fewer clouds than most places. Just saying, it's a desert. Bumper. Access flight school. Welcome back. Yo, yo, yo. Um, <clears throat> I can't see my face anymore if that matters. <laughs> Sorry.